The Lord be with you. Well, good morning. We're glad that you're here. The sermon today will be extraordinarily short. You know, you'll just have time to kind of get resting, and it'll be over. And mess up your nap. But that is so that afterwards, we can have a town meeting and fight. And we can have that town meeting and still get to lunch before the Methodists, you know. So that's our goal. So be prepared for that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, look at the pink sheet in your bulletin and you can see that there's a sort of a plan for implementing and then another plan. Uh, no, there's a framework that needs to be implemented, and the framework is sort of there for you, but the implementation is what we're going to talk about. Let's go on with the prelude. Yes. Let us stand, if you're able, and let us <clears throat> read the call to worship and the prayers. <clears throat> Happy are those who take delight in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water. In all that they do, they prosper. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. May God number us with the righteous as we worship the Lord. Let us worship God and let us pray together. O oh God, you are like an ever-flowing stream, watering the earth and refreshing creation. We draw from your Holy Spirit life-giving sustenance. We are cleansed of all sin through Christ our Savior. We receive from your word wisdom to guide us. We sing praises to you for your life-giving care. Redeemer's praise, the glory. 
continue our prayers and confess our sins. Forgive our vain repetitions, O God of mercy, for our deeds do not match our words of belief. We mouth pious slogans, but fail to correct injustice. We claim to be righteous while practicing bigotry and rejecting others. We glory in your gifts that bring success and comfort. Yet we deny neighbors their right to prosper. Help us to confess Christ risen for all people and forgive our failure to translate faith into action. And blessed is the one who walks not in the way of sinners, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Indeed, in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. Our kiddos and youth are busy in the kitchen getting soup ready for all of you. And today is Super Bowl Sunday, and we are so excited because today is the big game. And you know what, you know which players play for what team because they have uniforms, right? And each team has their own colors, so their fans typically wear their colors or their mascot on their shirt and things like that. And some of them even paint their bodies that color. And everybody knows who the ref is because of his striped shirt and, of course, all of us at home yelling at him to get new glasses, right? So, but my question is, can you look at someone and tell that they're a Christian? Well, maybe. They may have a piece of jewelry that got a cross on it. Or maybe you're wearing a shirt like I am today that says, Jesus sparks joy, everything else is just clutter. 
So, but how can we tell? Or how can we show people that we are Christians? Well, there's a little song that we all learn when we're in youth group or when we're a little kid that says they will know we are Christians by our love, right? So today is the perfect opportunity to show that love to people in our community that are facing struggles with having enough to eat. So I hope today, after the meeting, you will come down and get some soup, make a small donation if you can, and this will go to help each ICM on the corner table and to support our youth and young disciples and their mission efforts. So um, if you would allow me to, I'd like to say a blessing over that so that um, when you get your soup, if you've placed your order, we're going to pack it for you. If you've not placed your order, no big deal. Come get some soup. There's plenty. All right? So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I just ask that as we go throughout this week, that we show people we are your children by the way we love others. Lord, I just ask that you be with the organizations we are trying to support today and help them reach out and love those in our community who need your help. Lord, I just ask that you bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and further service to you, and you bless the hands that have prepared it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We read today first from Psalm 1. Blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither, and all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And then we read from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who shall go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and say to this people, keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. And then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. 
Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing where it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. So you're walking down the street, downtown Newton, on a Tuesday, and you encounter your friend. And you greet him, he greets you. And then you apologize. You know, it's been, it's been weeks since we talked. I'm sorry, I meant to call you. I owe you and your wife dinner. You know, all this apologizing. And then he, in turn, absolves you. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Think nothing of it. I've been busy, too. We'll get together soon. How about that? that oh, okay. That sounds good. So after the absolution, you share news. What's been going on in your life? Well, you know, my daughter had a baby. I'm a grandpa. What's been going on with you? You know, top that. And he says, well, my kid bought a house at the beach, so we can go to the beach every other Saturday. And you keep talking, blah, blah, blah. But you really must get on with your errand because this was an unexpected visit. And you say, well, it's been nice to catch up. And, and then you make promises. We really have to get together soon before much more time passes. I will call you next week. OK, he says, that sounds good. I'll call you, too. Talk to you then, and you shake hands, and you depart. That is exactly what happened in Isaiah 6. And I, I have to say I'm indebted to my old friend and mentor, Wesley Baker, for this whole interpretation. But that's what happened in Isaiah 6, and that's what happens when we gather for worship. So as we look at Isaiah, you know, we see the prophet is in the temple and he sees the Lord. And the first thing we notice is there's no greeting. This relationship is very unequal. God is much higher and has much more splendor than Isaiah. And the first thing Isaiah says is, oh, woe is me. I've seen the Lord. I'm in trouble now. That's the apologizing, confession of sin part of the encounter. Now the absolution comes as the seraph, which is a kind of an angel thing that flies around, takes a coal from the, from the altar, a burning coal, and touches it to his mouth, which symbolically absolves him of his sin. Then he hears God say, who will go for us and whom shall I send? Now there's a word here to the wise. Never ever volunteer until you know what the mission is. But Isaiah throws caution to the wind and says, I'm here, send me. I'll do it. What do you want me to do? And then he's given this horrible message to proclaim, and they depart. The vision goes away. Isaiah goes out to tell people that destruction is coming. So there's that pattern, same pattern as when you greet somebody in the street. And it's the same pattern we have in worship. You know, we come and we greet each other, and then we hear the call to worship where God greets us we're greeted by our equals, and we're greeted by somebody who's not our equal. We confess our sin, and we hear that God forgives us, and it's the same as Isaiah, and it's the same as our street encounter. I've got some friends that I've seen once in 40 years, and I've talked to them 20 years ago. And every time we make, pro you, know, we're, you know, we're not going to let another 20 years go by. We'll be too old and we'll die. We're going to talk sooner. We'll see. We share news, right? 
We hear the scripture read and proclaimed. Scripture is explained and we're motivated to do something or, or not to do something with what we hear. And then we make promises. Yes, Lord, I will do that. Yes, Lord, I will take that on as my, as my personal mission. Sometimes we make promises to each other about the life of the church. And then we shake hands and we depart and we go out into the world to proclaim our encounter with God and to tell other people about God's love poured out for us in Jesus Christ. That's how worship works. That's the basics. Now we do a lot of other stuff. I mean, we sing hymns to God. We have the little songs that we sing after certain prayers and things. We have um, the creed. And we have all these little prayers all sprinkled throughout the liturgy. But all of that is an addition to the basic framework. And some of that is just personal preference. You know, you like the kind of music that's done here. Other people like the kind of music done down the road at some big church with different instruments. However you worship, whatever your personal preferences might be, we need to keep in mind that this is an activity that's done by we, not by me, you know? I remember this morning that the first Sunday that Wesley Baker was at the church I served, he came as an interim pastor after the 30-some year pastorate of uh, the guy who retired. So Wesley's sitting there waiting on his time to preach. And he kept getting up, and I kept saying, wait, wait. Because we had to honor the Sunday school teachers. We had to recognize the Sunday school classes. And we had to give out a rose to the oldest mother, the mother with the most children and grandchildren, and the one who'd been the mother the longest. So Miss B in the back row got three roses every year, but that's how we did it, you know? And Wesley kept getting up and I kept saying, wait, your turn will come. And finally, he threw the bulletin down and says, this isn't an order of worship, it's a shopping list. And I started learning things from Wesley. Well, this is where we're going to stop. You'll have to take this and think about it. I'm going to stop here so that we have time to discuss worship in some more detail after we finish the liturgy. But I thought you'd like some thoughts about how we worship and how it works and what it is, and how we relate to one another, and how we relate to God in it. Thanks be to God. Amen.
say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we gather for prayer today, I can report to you that Deb Wakefield's hip replacement must have gone very well four days ago because she was in worship this morning. She was the first one here. Ron and Gail Roscoe report that they are recovering well from COVID. And we receive word this morning that Kenny Giles, whom some of you may remember, uh, died Friday in California. And so we keep his family in our prayers as well and all the others that you see on the prayer list. So let us pray. We make our prayers, O oh God, the very first thing we think of is your amazing grace and your goodness to us in Jesus Christ, the love which fills our hearts and spreads out from one to another, the love which you poured out as you poured out your spirit upon us. We think of that and we give you thanks for Jesus and his life and death and resurrection. We give you thanks for your spirit's presence with us and we give you thanks for all of this that comes from your gracious hand And even as we give thanks, O oh God, we, we pray for these who are sick, that you will help them continue to recuperate and get better. We pray for these who mourn, that you will comfort their grief and ease their sorrow. We pray for new life, and we rejoice with Charles and Mary on the birth of their granddaughter. We pray for those who defend our country wherever they are. We pray that you'll bring them home. We pray for those who are elected to lead us and that you will give them wisdom so that they can make policies that help all of us. In all of this, we give you our thanks, O God, and like Isaiah, we say, here I am, send me. And we say it knowing that you will equip us and go with us. And so hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
So go in peace, and may all the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you this day and every day forever. Alleluia. Amen. Go with us, Lord, and guide the way through this sad strong.